Hi, I'm Gang Chen. In this section, we're going to discuss population level modeling, also known as group analysis. We have different ways to look at uh, population level modeling. First, let's talk about the modeling considerations. Spatial unit. Sometimes people analyze their data by treating the data as a three dimensional data set. So, in other case, voxel is the spatial unit. Occasionally, people focus on the cortex, uh, cortex surface. So in other case, the data would be two-dimensional. So each load is a spatial unit. Lastly, people may predefine a list of regions in the brain. So you focus on those regions, then you can analyze each region separately, or you can put all those regions into one integrated model. In ter terms of input data at the population level, we usually take beta values from each subject. Uh, those betas come from the time series regression model. Those betas intrinsically they carry standard errors. So, but most of the time, people simply ignore the uncertain information about the betas. But occasionally, it may be worthwhile considering to combine the uncertain information at the group level. Another consideration is about uh, trials. So at the subject level, each condition usually has many trials. Typically, people ignore cross-trial variability. That means the assumption is all the trials have this exactly the same brain response. That's a strong assumption. That may have some problem about uh, the generalizability at the population level. So alternatively, you, we could analyze each trial separately. Then if we have 20 trials, you end up with 20 betas per condition. That would be a little bit complex at the population level, but in terms of uh, modeling accuracy, that would be a better approach. Next, brain response. The typical approach, people assume a uh, fixed shape about a hematoid response. So use one fixed curve to apply all the brain regions, all the conditions, all the subjects. If we want to try an accurate approach, that would be to estimate the hematoid response. So we end up with multiple betas per condition. That would be a challenge at the population level, but the gain is statistical power and uh, modeling sensitivity. In terms of uh, quantitative variables, typical approach is to assume linearity. But occasionally, maybe it's worth considering nonlinear relationships. Lastly, interactions. Whenever there are two or more variables, regardless of their factors or quantity variables, whether you want to assume one variable depends on another variable, that's the focus of uh, interaction effects. In terms of different models at the population level, uh, the popular ones are students' t-tests, general linear model, ANOVA, ANCOVA, and linear mixed effects model. The more adventurous approaches uh, in re-imaging would be a Bayesian multi-level modeling. That would help to uh, handle multiplicity. Multiplicity, that's people call a multiple comparison issue. Another complex modeling approach is multi-level smoothing splines. So that helps to account for nonlinearity whenever there is a quantitative variable at the population level. Lastly, in terms of uh, results interpretation, people usually focus on the effects they are interested in, but that's one perspective. Another perspective is focus on the model. Right? So that's uh, their 
there are different uh, ways to it, it's like uh, when starting from point A to point B if your goal is to reach point B then uh, maybe there are different ways to reach that point B right so that's how the models in the picture the next perspective is about uh, how to interpret the results the results the popular approach is people dichotomize them based on the statistical evidence that's artificially draw a line in the sand but the alternatively may be better to estimate estim focus on the estimation of the results we'll use examples to show the subtleties and the distinction between the two approaches so in Anthony we have a list of uh, population level modeling programs let's briefly go through one by one so first let's start with uh, the massive univariate approach so in that case we treat each voxel each node or each brain region as an isolated entity so that's so with 200,000 voxels we basically build 200,000 models right so associated with that is the penalty of multiple comparison so that's uh, the programs that's why all the programs uh, start with uh, 3d right so we deal with uh, um, three-dimensional data set or you, even if it's a two-dimensional or even RIs but those programs still would be able to handle those scenarios two-dimensional data set or even one dimension so start with the simplest one 3d t-test plus plus so uh, in that case basically I mean as the name indicates you use that program to handle one sample two sample paired t-test or you can use that to handle simple general linear model like you have a quantity variable or you have combined with uh, I mean two groups uh, in that case it would, would be a simple ANCOVA situation so that's 3D T-test plus plus the next program 3D MIMA MIMA stands for mixed effects multi-level analysis the uh, multi-level in this case is we take both betas and the t statistic as input the reason the rationale for this approach is the t statistic contains the uncertainty information about the uh, each beta value so we can use that as a leverage to uh, to uh, to provide a, a weighted uh, average so to gain more accurate uh, estimate at the population level Next program 3D MVM, multivariate modeling. So we basically use that program to handle general linear model and NOVA and COVA. 3D LME. So we use that to handle simple linear mixed effect model. Next one, 3D LMER. So this is a relative and dual program. So we use that to handle complex linear mixed effects modeling, or you, we can use that to uh, uh, estimate a test with test reliability. That's sort of like uh, intra cross correlation, but a little bit more advanced. 3D MSS, multi level smoothing splines. We use this program to model nonlinear relationship between quantity variable and photo response. Or we may use this to model the situation when the, uh, each task is estimated with the multiple basis functions. Basically, we estimate the hemodynamic response. So in that case, each condition will have multiple betas. So 3D MS can handle that situation. 3D ICC. This is program is uh, for intercross correlation, but this is the uh, classical intra-class correlation recent uh, investigation indicates the concept of intra-class correlation may be a little bit uh, problematic uh, because it, it tends to underestimate the reliability so a better approach would be to use 3D RMER 
to perform test we test reliability that uh, is an uh, advanced approach the next program 3d isc so you can use this program to handle inter-subject correlation so that's basically you have a naturalistic uh, data set so uh, you calculate uh, each subject pair to get the between that pair, uh, two subjects of each pair you calculate the correlation then perform population level analysis so all those programs are for uh, I mean as the name indicates there are three dimensional data sets uh, perform a massive univariate approach the next category I mean, is RI based um, basically the modeling from other perspective that's based on multi-level modeling uh, currently there are two programs first there's uh, RIA I mean RBA region based uh, basing analysis so this program can be used to uh, perform the typical group analysis when you have a list of uh, regions uh, RIs so that, that's for region based analysis next the one MBA that's basic space analysis In this case each subject you have a, a, a matrix basically the, most of the time probably it's a, like a correlation matrix among a list of regions that's probably uh, like a recent state so in that case uh, the traditional approach of course you focus on each matrix element separately right so then in the end you need to deal with uh, the multi multiple comparison issue so the MBA basically you build one model instead of one model per matrix element so one model to handle all the matrix element together so that uh, the advantage is we don't have the multi uh, multiplicity issue but uh, the com computation uh, time is a little bit heavy so at the population level we need to think about the data hierarchical structure right so at the top level it's uh, I mean this is the population level modeling we have a group right so sometimes we have multiple groups under that level we have a list of subjects right so for each subject you will have multiple conditions each condition usually we have multiple trials so think about this hierarchical structure at the population level when we build a model how do we incorporate the hierarchical structure at the population level so most of the time people ignore the trial at the bottom level the cross trial variability so that's why the popular approach is we only deal with three levels population subject condition more well, recent uh, I mean recently uh, research indicates it, it would be better to incorporate the trial level effects so that means we would deal with four level structure because just like the way we deal with subjects subjects we have multiple subjects they are uh, representatives as a, a hypothetical population same thing multiple trials when we design experiment those trials are also are representatives for each condition so ideally we should treat those trials the same way as we deal with subjects so why do we need to uh, uh, why do we need to perform population level modeling well first of all ideally we want to build a model that incorporates all the levels instead of uh, spreading the two but that usually we don't do that for two reasons one is the model complexity second reason is the computation feasibility it's just uh, the current computation power is not there yet so that's why we spread it into two stages that's why we have the subject level we build a time series regression model solve it with the generalized least squares so that's the typical uh, subject analysis then we 
go uh, at the population level, that's what where we are now to construct population level model. Uh, a good approach is we um, combine the beta and the t statistics from each subject, but that can only handle simple cases. Most of the time, we typically ignore the reliability information. So that's the common approach. We focus on the beta only, ignoring the reliability. So the reason we perform population level model modeling is because we want to generalize from the limited number of subjects to a hypothetical uh, population pool. So that's the uh, basically we we do science. We that's the uh, the goal, ultimate goal, to generalize to to uh, uh, to make a general statement. Same thing about the. Uh, uh, I mean, with that generalizability comes with a prior information. That prior information is we assume those subjects follow a Gaussian distribution. Suppose we have 20 subjects. We don't believe those subjects are equally, I mean, uniformly dispersed everywhere. Instead, we assume those subjects follow a Gaussian distribution. That means most of the subjects tend to be centered around some average. There are some outliers, but they tend to be sparse. But that prior, would that prior equally applicable to a trials? It should, but unfortunately, that's not people usually do. So uh, that's why at the subject level, simply, the typical approach is to aggregate those trials. That's why, and with the assumption that all the trials have exactly the same bold response. So that's the aggregation approach. So a better approach is to model the cross-trial variability the same way as we handle the cross-subject variability. So that is, uh, uh, ideally, we want to estimate the trial level effects. So we bring those individual trial beta values to group level, then we can build a better model, treat those tri trials this, uh, uh, in the same way as uh, we treat those subjects by assuming those trials, for example, follow Gaussian distribution. Um, so let's look at uh, the data structure at the population level. So there are different types of variables. So some uh, usually we have factors. Well, that's, uh, those are categorical variables. Uh, then we may have quantitative variables like age, brain volume. Right? So then for each of those two types, it can be a within or between. So, for example, factors, we may have task, right? So task, for example, positive versus negative. That's usually a within subject factor because each subject presumably performs both tasks. So that's why it's called within subject factor. Even for quantity variable, we may also have, have a within subject quantity variable. For example, reaction time. Suppose we have two tasks positive and negative. Each task, they may have uh, has a, a average reaction time. So we have two tasks. Associated with those two tasks, we may have reaction time, one for positive, one for negative tasks. So in that case, we have two within subject variables. One is factor, positive versus negative. One is reaction time. We have two reaction time. Uh, reaction numbers per subject. Between subject, that can be a factor or can be a quantitative variable. Right? Factor can be, we have groups, for example, patients versus controls. So that group has, has two labels. Or even quantitative variable, we may have uh, uh, between subject uh, quantitative variable, for example, age. right? So that's a between subject. That's different from with uh, within subject quantity variable like a reaction time. So H, each subject has only one number, right, at one particular moment. 
So that's why we call it between subject quantity bar. From uh, we, uh, investigators' perspective, perspective, each effect, I mean, it's either uh, you are interested in that effect or not. So that's the from the analysis perspective, right? So for example, that interest can be you focus on the contrast between two conditions, A versus B, or contrast between two groups, or can be focused on each level of a factor separately. So for example, you have two conditions. You may be interested in, in addition to the contrast, you're also interested in two they are each condition separate. Even if you are not interested, I mean, when people are not interested in a variable, really, the, that variable is treated as, I mean, second tier, right? So that's people sometimes even call it a nuisance variable or a covariate, right? That's another term to describe a variable of low interest. From modeling perspective, regardless of your interest or not, each variable is unique, is treated equally, right? regardless you are interested or not. So it may be um, the reason I emphasize that is the typical way in your imaging is if a variable is not of interest, they are, of course, they are treated as second tier, but also the, the modeling is simplified. For example, interactions between a uh, uh, variable of no interest with other variables, you are not considered. That may be problematic. That's one problem. When reporting results, people don't usually say anything about those variables of no interest. That also can be troubling. In terms of models, uh, at the population level, as we mentioned before, the students' t-test, general leader model, ANOVA, and COVA, leader mixed effects model, multi-level smoothing splines, that's for nonlinearity modeling. Lastly, we have Bayesian multi-level modeling. That's currently, we use that to deal with uh, multiple classicity problem. Uh, if we focus on these brain regions, or a matrix based on analysis. So that brings up uh, to the multiple testing adjustment issue at the uh, population level. So the reason we have that issue is the massively univariate approach, because we treat each spatial unity as an isolated entity. They don't have any commonality across voxels, nodes, regions. So we have 200,000 voxels, we build 200,000, I mean 200,000 voxels, we build 200,000 models, right? But that the penalty is you have to somehow to uh, adopt, I mean to uh, uh, adjust that issue for, uh, because of the pure chance. But the problem with this approach is we assume all those voxels are unrelated. When I say unrelated, not, not in the sense that uh, the labeling voxels have some relatedness. That's not what I mean. Unrelated is what they don't share common information. So the underlying assumption is uniform distribution. Use the example of subjects I mentioned before. We have 20 subjects. That doesn't mean those 20 subjects don't share anything. That's why usually we assume this, all the subjects follow a Gaussian distribution. That Gaussian distribution embodies the common, commonality. Most of the subjects tend to, to center around some common effects, that's the population effect. Similarly, all the brain regions or voxels or nodes, they share some commonality. That they tend to be center around um, uh, common information. It, they are not uniformly distributed. So the massively univariate approach basically ignore that commonality. The, that ignorance basically will have to pay the heavy cost. That is the multiple testing adjustment uh, penalty. So 
that's why there's a issue i mean uh, we focus on with our voxel wise approach versus region based region based we don't have to analyze each region separately we can bring those regions into an uh, integrated model then uh, adopt the similar approach when we deal with subjects so let's briefly discuss some common concepts at the population level factors right factors there are categorical variables um, they're discrete not they're quantitative but there are two different ways to describe the factors one is uh, within versus control i mean between between i mean each subject either is the concept of nesting each subject is either belongs to one group or the other right so like patients versus controls so each subject either a patient or control not both so that in that case from modern perspective uh, the two groups are soon to be independent of each other in contrast within subject variables i mean in this case the factors they are uh, within in the sense that each subject ha has both conditions like positive versus negative so in this case they are not independent of each other because uh, uh, for example positive or negative conditions both subject i mean uh, both conditions uh, are uh, associated with each subject uh, that are related to some extent so then uh, there's a variance covariance structure associated with uh, the, the, those levels so that's one way to uh, categorize factors another way is um, fixed versus random effects within uh, under the traditional statistic framework that differentiation is uh, the assumption uh, the uh, the underlying assumption that uh, for example let's look at a concrete, concrete examples we talk about the fixed effects variables the reason we call it fixed uh, because we believe those uh, factor those variables their effects are hypothetically constant they don't vary for example between two groups patients versus controls we believe at the population level their brain response are constant so in the model there's a a parameter associated with each effect we assume that parameter is fixed it's constant so it's usually very interesting their effects because we want to generalize make a general statement about uh, uh, those effects random effects uh, i can think of two situations in your imaging one is about subjects another one is about trials subjects uh, we recruit subjects from uh, a population pool use them as representatives so in the end when we in the uh, when we report we don't say anything about each individual subject's specific brain response so that's why because we treat those subjects as representatives in terms of modeling there's they are simply they are uh, random variables there's a, a distribution associated with that assumption usually it's gaussian distribution that is changeable in the sense that those subjects are usually anonymous right so we can replace some of them or all of them from different set of subjects similarly trials are also should be considered as random effects because when we design uh, experiment those trials are also exemplars they are representatives of a particular condition so they should be treated the same as subjects unfortunately that's not currently the current practice because at the individual level uh, in the time series regression model those trials are are fixed not one them they are fixed in a sense where it's assumed all those trials have exactly the same brain response so to be able to generalize to the population level population of subjects population of trials it's ideally those uh, subject and trials should be uh, modeled as random effects but this 
clear distinction between fixed and random effects is still uh, within the conventional studies framework. Once we step out of this domain, this di distinction usually is blurred or it's not uh, existing anymore. But that's under the Bayesian framework. Um, that's a little bit different perspective. Um, so in terms of modeling, we already talked about student TDS, general linear model, ANOVA, and COVA linear mixed effects model, multi-level smoothing splines, basic multi-level 